Hi, I'm Lucy Hemmen, and I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in teen girls. Today I have my own teen with me, and we're going to talk about topics that often come up in my private practice office, and hopefully we'll generate some ideas for you to use with your teen daughters. Marley? Uh, my name is Marley Hemmen. I'm 19 years old, so I'm just finishing up my teen years. My sister is 15 years old, so that also gives me another perspective on the whole teen ageness, and I feel like I have a lot to say about it. Uh, the other day, my best friend was telling me a story about clothing and kind of a horrifying moment that she looks back on. You know those moments that you look back and you're like, what was I thinking? <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Um, so she was just playing dress up, you know, with another friend and they were just got dressed in these dresses and were wearing heels and probably looked so inappropriate for their age. I think they were like 15 or 14 or something like that and they wanted to go walk around downtown, which uh, our, in our downtown would look so out of place and so inappropriate. And then she said she walked down the stairs and her parents just <laughs> looked at her and screamed and said, get back upstairs and get dressed. And she didn't think anything of it at the time. She was just like, oh, I just wanna wear heels out in public, which people would, you would never do. And she was horrified. Mm -hmm. Now looking back, she was like, that's so embarrassing that I would think that that was okay to do. To stand in front of my dad looking like that and he wanted to cry. And I want now looking back, I realize it's how inappropriate that was. And but at the time, it was completely okay. Like I just want to go out. I look good. And she was 11 or 12. Yeah, like yeah. super, super young. Yeah, that's that's a uh, that's cute and and also excruciating, <laughs> because because the little girls that do that, and also the 13, 14, sometimes 15 year olds who do that, they when they they feel like they are little girls playing dress up and they feel so cool and but you don't look like that and innocent and that's it that's exactly it they don't realize that the attention that they're getting from other people has a energy to it that freaks parents out mm -hmm. and and they they're often oblivious to that yeah. but it must have been sad for her too because she was yeah. feeling I did that too once for Halloween yes. I went out on Halloween wearing heels and I was not old enough to even be able to walk in them properly without falling but well, since you were four, you found the <laughs> highest heels you could and you trotted it around. And I think that's, that is, a, little girls always want to be big girls. Little girls are always kind of attracted to older girls. And, and that's part of uh, kind of getting your cue on, on what's, what's in your future. Mm -hmm. Just testing the waters and seeing what we can pull off without mm -hmm. getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. Well, for parents, what a lot of parents uh, freak out about is that one day their kid is dressed in a recognizable way that appears wholesome or at least practical. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, uh, at some point, usually around 12, some 11, 12, 13, uh, girls start dressing in a way that makes parents drop their jaws. And I think the parents' big fear around that is, oh my God, you know, older men are gonna think that she's older than she is and she's gonna get, she's gonna get- The wrong attention. Exactly, the wrong attention. So do you think that there's a way that parents can talk to kids about that so that... Specifically clothing or just... Yeah, clothing. Um, For instance, the midriff is, is yeah. a big thing now. And I remember when the, the midriff, bearing one's midriff, yeah. started off with an inch. And now the shirts are way up, up here. here like that. And then the teen's argument is always, everybody wears this. This I is what everybody wears. I specifically remember being very young and seeing a Pepsi commercial of this woman with the like low rise jeans, right? When they were coming back into style, I guess high waisted mm -hmm. is okay now again. Mm -hmm. But I was like, I have to have those jeans and I have to look <laughs> like that woman and I'm just gonna rock it. And mm -hmm. it was such a strong urge because I was like, oh, it's okay to do, but now it's like, you're getting attention for the wrong reasons and and you're wanting to look like that at school yeah yeah not in a pepsi commercial at right. school but you know what else you're doing is you're connecting the effects really clearly of media on mm -hmm. your uh, it was super clear i remember the thought process mm -hmm. very very vividly mm -hmm. yeah so that's a hard thing so parents are competing with all these media images that mm -hmm that condition young girls 
to look a, a particular way. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to compete with that. It's really hard to say, I know you got 5,000 images in the last couple of hours on how to look sexy and attractive to men, but I'm gonna tell you, you actually have to cover your, your belly button or you have to pull those shorts um, down an inch or whatever, or up an inch, whatever is That's <laughs> the best thing you can do too, is just bulldog your way and say, you're not gonna wear that, you're gonna, and you maybe you, they'll cry, they'll be upset, but you're promoting it's bulldogging. a couple of years of early teenhood yeah. that you're gonna be upset about it. And then you're gonna look back and be happy that your mom made you not wear that super mini skirt because your peers will respect you more and they're not gonna think you're that girl that wears the skimpy little outfit. Mm -hmm. Not looking too mm -hmm. scandalous. I don't think there's any way to really, I mean, I think you can obviously talk to your daughter and kind of explain to her why she shouldn't be presenting herself that way, but it's it's gonna be sensitive and she's not gonna wanna hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty simple. I don't think there's that much room to kind of have a very evolved conversation about it, mm -hmm. there's a point when you just gotta say no. I think I'm parents have to pull rank on yeah, this one. And in, in our culture today, a lot of parents have a relationship with their kids where they really want to be equals. Mm -hmm. And that can be really great because I think kids feel really respected and kids feel that their parents really listen to them and they get to influence sort of how things roll yeah. in, the, in, the, uh, in their lives. But the downside of that is sometimes parents don't pull rank when they need to, which mm -hmm. is you are not leaving the house yeah. with those shorts on and you are not gonna wear you know, those heels out to the party tonight. But you're saying that that actually is, can be really effective because at least it's clear, Definitely. right? Because mm -hmm. then does a parent really care if, if your daughter is going out and saying, oh, my mom, she won't let me wear this. Like, wh she's not wearing it. You got the ending result that you wanted. Mm -hmm. She may complain about it to her friends, but she looks presentable. Uh -huh. And if that's the end result you want in this case, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And you think when teens get older, they settle down, they don't push that boundary as Definitely. much? Yeah. I think so, too. Because you have a more established sense of self, and you kind of know who you want to be and in the beginning you're experimenting you don't know what you want people to think of you and as you get older you kind of figure it out and you're less concerned about I wore sweats pretty much every day of my senior year I did not care I was over it I yeah. didn't want to get dressed or do anything so I hear that from teenage girls a lot that in their definitely. freshman year they're killing themselves to I remember look working just right. so hard I'm yes. spending so much time on my makeup spending so much time and Senior year, I hardly ever wore mascara, and I pretty much just rolled mm -hmm. out of bed and went to school. I, I think that how much exposure kids have to screen time often, mm -hmm. often conditions them more heavily to kind of what, what they call it is um, to self-objectify, which is to treat yourself like a product that mm -hmm. needs to be to look a particular way yeah. and to be kind of rigid about your presentation and kind of overthink it and even sort of think that that's who you are, what you look like, instead of it just being, you know, the outfit that you're wearing because you like the color and it's comfortable, mm -hmm. um, working too hard to be objects that are almost like consumable items or mm -hmm. something. And I think that has a lot to do with, I really think it has a lot to do with screen time. Do you mean television and movies with screen time? Media. I should yeah. say media. Because yeah. when I think of like TV and stuff, obviously that's going to have an impact, but it's more like Tumblr and just shopping. Right. Like when you're online, like I spend so much time looking at clothes online and every one of those clothes, there is the model wearing that thing that mm -hmm. you're not going to look like that. Like mm -hmm. there's so much of that that's, I don't think parents would really think about. I think online shopping is a big one. Tumblr, Instagram, there's so much, so many little like fashion things on there. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely. when you were a ki little kid, I didn't have that. You didn't have that, right. Well, keep, they keep yeah. expanding what's out there with mm -hmm. social media. But also you were very slow to get a Facebook, but now all little kids, I mean, so many 12 year olds have Facebook and Tumblr and all of that. Yeah. and. 
I, I think parents get really sick of it because the kid becomes obsessed and it makes them moody because they get on Facebook and everybody else's life seems so much better or they found out that they find out somebody defriended them or um, and really the the big the big solution to that or the biggest way to work with it is to limit screen time but that's really very hard to enforce for parents because a lot of kids have laptops or access to computers well, when yeah, parents I aren't around you would maybe take daisy's computer away yeah she has her phone she has everything she needs to do right. on her phone so you you can't take it all away i cannot imagine parenting someone with eight different mm -hmm. pieces of technology yeah I think that's actually a really good way to go, though, is for parents to take the phone and the computer away from the teen girl, mm -hmm. not as a punishment, but just as a, hey, it's time to switch gears. Not every moment of your life has to and include Once you do access. switch gears, it feels good. I remember yeah. if you get your phone taken away, you talk to your friends in a couple hours and say, sorry, my mom took my phone away. And that's a great excuse to just kind of unwind. And in the meantime, you read a, you read a little bit of a book, maybe finished you- Finished my homework. Yeah, you finished your, did a little bit of art and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I think it's really, um, it's a, probably about not making it seem punitive, but I think in, initially kids feel like it's punitive. Like you're taking my computer. That's it feels so, like the end of the world. But I need it for, I need mm -hmm. it for uh, homework. I need, my, I need my laptop for homework. I need my phone because I'm Definitely texting my friend too. about homework, which is what I think. I, I remember saying that. Yeah, yes. I was, I was texting about homework, but. Yeah. Yes, I know when kids get in trouble with their parents and they get their phone taken away for a week or whatever, they often report that they felt much better and when they take Facebook vacations that they feel a lot better too. Mm -hmm. So to bring this full circle, all of this, uh, all of the screen time conditions, especially young girls, to kind of, to kind of push into being older than they really are. Mm -hmm. And when you look back and remember the little memories, like my friend of trying to be older than you are, you're just embarrassed. It's just so <laughs> embarrassing when you look back on it and you just wonder, why did I care about that? Mm -hmm. Because now that we're older and we have so many more responsibilities and there's so many more stressors, it's like, enjoy that time while you have it. Enjoy time of just mm -hmm. kind of going to school and playing your sports and hanging out with friends because that's as simple as your life is going to be probably. Mm -hmm. Like things just get a lot more complicated, even though at the time everything feels like a big, big deal. So I don't really regret um, getting in trouble. Not, mm -hmm. not in you don't trouble, hold a grudge but like, about it. I don't mm -hmm. hold a grudge against the times when I remember being super upset with you for laying down the law. In the long run, your kid's not going to be mad at you forever. It's just like at the time it sucks, but I'm glad you kind of were strict when you thought it was important because looking back, it was what I needed at the time, and I know mm -hmm. that that's what... I like wish I knew me. that then. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was probably. <laughs> not well, now to. now that I have more experience with teenagers, I realize that girls are uh, pros at what I call the bark off. So the mom will say, "Hey, those shorts are inappropriate to wear to school," and the girl will really intensely bark the, at the mom. And then if you're if you're a pretty easygoing person, mm -hmm. then unfortunately that does kind of uh, that does kind of work in backing you off. And so I know as a parent, sometimes it's been hard for me to 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 you know push back. And I think that's where a lot of the mother daughter um, conflict comes in is because daughters can be really powerful. And as a mom, I want you to be powerful. I don't necessarily want you to be powerful with <laughs> with me uh, against the purpose that I'm working toward, but it is good to hear from you that that, that kind of dissolves mm -hmm. in the big picture, that all dissolves, and the principles that moms are often trying to enforce are, are worth, the, worth the conflict Definitely. that happens. The conflict will last not that long, but overall it'll the be The benefit good. outweighs the conflict. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Perfect. Yeah.